All right. Uh, hello. Um, I wanted to make a video uh, providing some feedback for Trials of Osiris. Um, had a funny thought recently that, you know, unless you're a content creator, you don't really have much of a voice in this community. Uh, comments on Reddit, posts on Reddit can get downvoted into oblivion. You know, tweets can disappear into the ether. I don't know how much feedback Bungie sees from the average guy, so let's try making a YouTube video. Before I get into my vision for what Trials could look like, the fixes for Trials that I have brainstormed, I just want to talk about a little bit who I am. Since I'm not a streamer and I'm not a content creator, I am effectively nobody in this community, and as a result, I feel like I need to give you my resume. I don't have any experience talking to a mic or a camera either, so, and I do have a chronic cough, full-blown quarantine haircut and a beard, so just bear with me here. I have been playing Destiny since the second week of D1. I started the very week the community was discussing, why would you ever waste your exotic slot on a heavy weapon? Outside of Destiny, I've been gaming both on console and PC since the early days of DOS, C semicolon backslash program files, backslash games, backslash hocuspocus.exe. That was my very first game, and I memorized that when I was 10. I'm now 32 years old. I've played at the competitive esports level nine years ago on a Team Fortress 2 Highlander team called the Stoic Defenders of the Igloo. It was an all-Canadian team that went on to be the top, six, top 16 ranked in the world. Uh, and in Destiny, I can only describe myself as a grinder. I've gotten multiple titles, Unbroken, Dredgen, Reckoner, Harbinger, and any seasonal title to date, I have it. I have a few clan mates that have also gotten Unbroken and played PvP nearly exclusively, and honestly, like, we can't typically get more than three wins in a weekend of Trials. I've gotten to five. I'll tell that story later, and... I went flawless with a couple Twitch streamers once and held my own. And in Destiny 1, I played Trials every weekend. Every weekend. I grabbed a card, I grabbed my boons, grabbed my bounties, and I hopped on in an LFG and tried to get as far as I could. At the very least, I'd do the bounties, and I put in the time. I put in the work. I'm a grinder. I eventually went flawless with two guys named Dean and Fly. I will never forget their names, and if I watch that little clip on the B on uh, D2 where it shows you your accomplishments, their names come up, and it's a good memory. I got an Arc Jewel of Osiris hand cannon, and I showed it off to my PvE friends and rubbed it in their faces every time it was an Arc Burn. In Trials in D1, you know, it was accessible enough that I and the average person could hop in every weekend and walk away with a bit of loot and a feeling like our time was being rewarded. Both in the loot that we required and the time that we put in to improve our play. Because I got better. You know? Historically speaking, that's how I've played games. How I ended up, you know, in these you know global tournaments in Team Fortress 2. I just got good. Most people like me that put in that time were eventually able to hit the lighthouse. But something went wrong. So, like, what, why is, isn't that the case in D2? Like, there's some iteration about this version of Trials that seemingly feels like a brick wall has been put up in front of the casual audience. And I've been racking my brain about why that is. Why are people so unable, unwilling to give it a go? Instead, they're spending money on recub services, praying to R and Jesus to win raffles with Twitch streamers to take them there. Like that was the only way I felt like I could get a flawless run was to do that. And like, why is that the case? The the, the issue that I and as I've worked it through my brain is that it's it's systemic it's not good there's multiple problems and it's going to require a bit of an overhaul to make more appealing to a general audience and i'm going to do my best to avoid using undercooked half-baked or raw memes as i'm sure those are sore spots for the, the devs like they put in the time to make this version of trials and it's 
so poorly received that it can't feel good to hear those memes, so I'll, I'll try to avoid those. And this game's success seems to be built on this community's vision of what the game is capable of. Destiny has so much potential. So here's what I believe an ideal version of Destiny's endgame PvP experience should look like. I'm going to build an ideal version of Trials. And I'll try to do it within the capabilities of Destiny 2's current systems so that it wouldn't be too much of a stretch for the devs to create. First, there are some problems to tackle with the current iteration. Pitfalls to learn from. And I'll give a brief overview of each one and my envisioned fix. And I will go into further detail greater greater detail further on in the video. First is low card farming. We need to change the reset parameters on the trials passages. We have a reward structure. We need to adjust tokens and how they're doled out, what they're for, and they should never go away. Abysmal player engagement. How do we how do we get more people into this mode? We need a new lighthouse and we need a new end game. Trials is not the end game. Believe me when I say this, Trials was never the end game in Destiny 1. The lighthouse was the end game. Getting that flawless run was the end game. I'll explain that further. And fourth, accessibility. How do we get people in? How do we make it more accessible? Let's have a system of loss forgiveness. We already have mercy cards, but let's have some loss forgiveness, all right? And I'll, I'll explain further. Let's start with the low card farming. So step one in this overall fix is the removal of your ability to reset your card at will. The option to reset your card whenever you wanted created an issue, a systemic issue of low card farming for tokens. A lot of people blame Cammy Cakes because he pointed out what Astral Horizon was the three win reward. Don't go flawless. You intentionally lower the loot in your in your uh, pool for the Engram with Saint, and you have better chances of getting Astral Horizons when you turn in tokens. The system is designed not to be played. The, most, the optimal system is to not play Trials. The ability to reset your card at will promotes not playing. You can just win and reset. People advertise this on Bungie's official LFGs, one win reset. The proposed fix for this was um, to nerf token drops on the low end of the card. And I understand that from a development perspective, this was probably a quick and easy fix. You'd think that psychologically you'd push people on the, the later end of the card if there was less loot on the low end, but it never fixed it. It just made the mode less accessible for a casual player. So card resets should only be available when the card is broken or you've hit the seven win milestone. Being able to reset your card whenever you want drives people to the bottom end of the card. It loads all the tokens and all the loot onto the back end of the card doesn't actually drive, pe commit, drive people to commit to a full run. So if we take away their ability to reset, unless they meet these two requirements, you either get seven wins on your card or you break your card with three losses. It forces people to stay in the mode and stick it out for a little while. Now I'm sure you're asking, but if I get a loss on my card, what's stopping me from just throwing a couple games to get it over with? I gotta break my card faster so I can keep playing. We already have people advertising suicide squads on Bungie's official LFG right now. And frankly, if you throw a game, that just drives another team closer to the lighthouse. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. Pushing more people towards the lighthouse. You want to get as many people there per weekend as possible in this new system. The lighthouse needs to be filled up with players. So 
how do we mitigate the mentality of suicide squads? How do we get you to engage if you have one loss on your card? How do I convince you to keep playing and keep pushing for seven wins? Well, why not a system of loss forgiveness? If Saint-14 offered some form of loss forgiveness beyond a built-in mercy, people would be way more, I think, people would be way more willing to stick it out towards the end. A mercy card in its current form might as well just have four little boxes along the bottom. Because it's one mercy, three losses. It's four losses. But if, say, you got seven wins on your card and one loss, what if you went to Saint and he had a purchasable thing for, like, let's say, something expensive? Because it's a big deal. Like, a hundred trials tokens. And he'll remove that loss from your card. He'll welcome you to the lighthouse because you've been a dedicated trials player. You've put in the time. You've racked up your tokens. And you're a grinder. You're, you're, you're committed to trials. Saint could probably look the other way. Some loss forgiveness would incentivize people to keep pushing for those seven wins, even if they got one loss on their card. The reward structure in this current iteration of Trials is my second point. And it's funny, and I'm certain the devs right now have been racking their brains over this. Why don't, why doesn't anyone want to play Trials? It's actually the most generous it's ever been. People keep complaining about the loot in Trials, but the loot's actually never been better. It's, and it's funny. Because it's so generous. And the flawless chest is farmable. This allows people to get as many chances at their god rolls as they want. The problem, however, is that all of the loot is on the back end of the card. All of the loot is locked into a flawless chest that is farmable. And the, that means that the current reward structure is actually killing the mode. The problem is its generosity and its way it's structured. How could that be? Why is that? Well, let me explain. The current system only promotes the rich getting richer. Those who can go flawless keep going flawless. The sweats enter, the sweats don't leave, all weekend. Casual player, group of friends giving it a go, Someone who just wants to finish the bounties, maybe get some tokens. Someone who heard their favorite YouTuber saying, the three-win gun is really good this week, just get it. Or that someone like me, who sees that the five-win reward is really good, will enter the mode, and in their first game will be immediately met by a three-stack of people with gilded flawless titles wearing glowing trials armor, wielding adept guns in every single game that they play. Lose your game. Reset your card. Lose your game. Reset your card. Oh, you got a win? Whoop. Looking pretty good. Got another win? Whoop. Lose, 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 lose. Reset. Now you've been playing for an hour and a half, two hours. Your spirits are broken and you don't have anything to show for your time. It isn't fun and it isn't accessible because the mode fills up with sweats. And the sweat isn't ever drained out of the activity. The casual participant can't get in because it's already at maximum capacity. Like, just imagine Trials being an exclusive nightclub. It's filled to the brim with people who show up Friday night. And they don't, and those people don't leave the club until they're kicked out by the bouncer Monday morning when the club closes. Meanwhile, all weekend, there's a line out the door of casuals who only want to participate. But even if they get in the door of this club, the first thing that happens is that they're punched in the face by someone who's been on the dance floor, jacked up on Red Bulls for 72 hours. And so the person who waited in line all weekend is now wondering, what is the hype all about? Why did I wait in that line? And why would I, why would I do that again? Why would I ever go back there? To put it into perspective, I'll tell a personal story here. When the sword was the five-win reward, 
I'm seeing Esoteric on YouTube talking about how this thing can get chain reaction on it. I'm thinking a sword that makes things explode. Let's go. That's awesome. I spent four hours on the LFG trying to find a group. That was just trying to get in. You got suicide squads, you got recubs, and people just checking stats. If you're not like a god in PvP, and I'm above average, I can usually frag out and get like 30 plus kill games in control. And, you know, I've gone on broken and regularly play in survival with my buds. Like, I'm not a. I don't consider myself to be, like, a shit player, mind my language. I'm not... But I can't find a team if I go onto a Trials LFG, because everyone's checking my stats, and I'm not good enough for them. So four hours later, I find two guys that have a reasonable sense for what to expect from this mode, and we get in and we play, and four hours later we finally get five wins, and the sword that drops... Doesn't even have a decent role on it. And I'm just like, why did I just spend eight hours doing that? Like, why? What is wrong with me? That was the thought that went through my mind. What is wrong with me that I would do this? That's not healthy for your game mode. So I'm going on a tangent here. How do we fix this? How do we... Like, why would anyone ever go back into this mode? The first fix is tokens. Tokens should never be removed from your inventory. The, the fact that you can build up a bunch of tokens, and if you don't spend them, they just get deleted is... I'm sorry to say this to the developers of Bungie, but that is asinine. That is just so stupid. Tokens need to be doled out similarly as well as how they are an Iron Banner. I just think they need to be reduced a little slightly instead of 3 and 5. Four trials, through two and four, two for a loss, four for a win. If we're implementing a system of loss forgiveness, where with a hundred tokens you can forgive a loss, we need to start giving some tokens out. Okay, and these token drops should only drop when a player has an active trials passage in their quest tab. And this is important, and I'll explain more on this later. If you have an active trials passage, you can get tokens. If you don't, you don't get tokens. Secondly, we need to bring back the classic bounties from D1 every weekend. D1, there was a every weekend, there was one bounty for a piece of armor and one bounty for a weapon. Both of these need to come back every weekend. They need to be separate from the three win reward. Random weapon, random armor. The first bounty for armor, complete 10 games of Trials. Similar, I know, to what the Suicide Squads are doing, but you're only getting a piece of armor. That's not what you're here for. You're here for the weapons. The weapons bounty was defeat 75 Guardians in Trials. Defeating 75 Guardians in Trials can happen over 10 games. We need to incentivize and encourage the player to engage with the mode, not just jump off ledges. The fact that you can just... Suicide Squad your way to a 3 win reward is insane. And I don't know why this has this can't be addressed by just adjusting the bounty. Regardless, third, once a player hits the lighthouse and goes flawless, their current card should complete. They should be locked out from playing Trials, and instead, that Trials passage now becomes a lighthouse invitation. We have multiple step quests. This should be a multiple step quest. Step one, get to the lighthouse. Step two, go to the lighthouse. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> so you're done. You did it. You went flawless. You made it to the lighthouse. You beat trials that weekend. That means that one, you can only open the flawless chest once per weekend per character. And two, that the lighthouse needs to be reworked. It needs to be valuable. Getting to the lighthouse needs to be worth taking away the farm 
of the re repeatable flawless chest that the sweats are able to do every multiple times a weekend. You know, we don't want cool guy games to not be able to say, I got my eight adept guns this weekend. Here are some cool roles for you to try. Meanwhile, the rest of the community can't even get one. So there needs to be replayability. There needs to be like loot drops for those who make it that far. There needs to be a reward at the end of the tunnel beyond one chest per character per weekend. And that leads me into my conversation about how we have such abysmal player engagement, how the accessibility is so bad. The lighthouse, I believe, needs to become a true social space. We've got the farm, or we had the farm, I don't know, has it been sunset? Uh, we have the tower. And we need to give those who go flawless the lighthouse. It needs to be a special space that they can access all weekend long. Give it a postmaster, give it a cryptarch, let Saint-14 be in the hangar and at the lighthouse, who cares? Multiple NPCs, the followers, followers of Osiris can be at the landing zone cheering people on when they get there. We can have dance parties with multiple fire teams celebrating together. And just imagine you run into a team at the lighthouse who beat you earlier and prevented you from getting to the lighthouse earlier. And now you can emote in their faces like, hey, remember me? I made it. The lighthouse, that thing at the end of the tunnel needs to be truly special. Its current iteration, I'm sorry to say, is featureless, empty, and hollow. It is just a space with a chest. I think I spent over an hour with Dean and Fly running around exploring the lighthouse in Destiny 1. It still wasn't a true social space, don't get me wrong, but it had more to explore. The lighthouse on Mercury before it was sunset was almost identical to the lighthouse in Destiny 1's Trials. And there was a lot to look at. A lot of little details, a lot of things you could theorycraft about, and I'm sure Bife would have had a field day with. When I went flawless in D2 with, uh, I think I mentioned earlier that I did it with a pair of streamers, it was Rhythm and Lady Lucidia. They're both Twitch streamers. I won a raffle on Rhythm's uh, chat, go check them out. They're both awesome. Um, anyway, I think I was there for all of 15 minutes exploring that space before I realized there was nothing there. Both Rhythm and Lady Lucidia left me in the space to look around and there was nothing to find. It was empty. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. The lighthouse needs to be special. The lighthouse is the end game. The trials should not be the end game. The activity never was. It was getting there was the end game. But anyway, since I have said that in this ideal version of Trials, the Flawless Chest is, no, is only able to be opened once per weekend per character. The farmability needs to come from somewhere. And I'm imagining in this ideal version of Trials of Osiris that once you land in the lighthouse, there would be a flag or something similar to what we see in the tower during these special events that lets you access an, ex access an activity. There's a new Crucible playlist in the lighthouse, exclusive, only available to those who are in the lighthouse. Call it Lighthouse Elimination or something. Give it some flavor text like, you made it this far, continue to own your skills against the best of the best. And that is where the loot is. Iron Banner-esque loot in nature. Three tokens for loss, five tokens for a win, end of match drops. Trials loot raining from the heavens as you play in this new playlist. Hell, we could even rotate it weekend to weekend. Instead of it just being Lighthouse Elimination, call it Lighthouse Clash, Lighthouse Control, Lighthouse Survival. Go nuts, Bungie. Not only would this give a replayable loot raining from the heavens playlist for people to play in, 
aspirational activity beyond trials. It would also drain the sweat out of the trials run. It would make getting to the lighthouse more accessible. Because looking back at Destiny 1, I was able to get all the guns. I was able to get all the armor just from jumping in and casually playing until eventually I made it to the lighthouse and it was such a big deal for me. I felt so good when Dean and Fly and I finally pulled that off. These two guys I met on LFG, we just clicked, everything went well. You know, I had been improving my play over several months and we did it. But the loot was never inaccessible. I was able to get a full set of armor, all the guns. I only got the one adept weapon, but I was still able to get one of everything. So why, why can't we go back to that? Why can't the average Joe Blow still get one of everything? What's stopping them? Trials was never inaccessible. It wasn't the sweaty thing. The sweaty thing was getting to the lighthouse. So anyway, if your trials passage locks you out from trials, what about guys like Gren Grenader Jake? What about Rhythm, Lady Lucidia, Joverated, Follow Plays, all the Twitch streamers trying to build their brands and have a career carrying people to the lighthouse? Well, once you get there, maybe Saint could sell you a new card to enter back into the trials and provide and let you keep playing, let you bring people through. Before I mentioned that uh, you can only get tokens playing trials with um, an active trials passage. That's a, That was important because now your second card, let's call it a coaching passage, a coaching card, is active. You're not going to get rewards. You're not going to get tokens running people through. And the reason for this is there's technically nothing stopping a group of ill-intent guardians, some edgelord dredgens, from grabbing three coaching cards to gatekeep people from getting into the lighthouse. They go back into the playlist and they just stomp noobs, crush casuals. So you're either spending your weekend not getting any loot, or you're playing in a separate playlist, the Lighthouse playlist, and you're getting loot. No, well, okay, well, but I'm a, I'm a Twitch streamer and I want to carry people to the Lighthouse. Let's be real here, guys. The money you're making running your stream and running your carrying business, the goodwill, you're building your brand, that's your reward. If you want to farm your God rolls, there's a separate playlist. It's the exact same thing as when a group of three, like let's say ZK Mushroom, Cami, and Cool Guy all stack up and run flawless over and over to get a bunch of god rolls from the chest. If you want to farm, you farm. Separate. If you want to get carry people to the lighthouse, you carry people to the lighthouse. End of story. The overall goal of the lighthouse should be to fill it with as many guardians as possible every weekend. The PvE endgame is raiding. Anybody can raid. The PvP endgame can be the lighthouse. Not everyone is going to get there. It's still going to take work. If you think that taking the sweat out will make it easier, it won't. Because you're going to have more teams smashing into each other with making it this much more accessible. Trials, like I said, was never the endgame. The endgame itself so the activity itself wasn't ever the end game, because you could play the activity casually. You could get loot casually. The flawless run was the end game. The lighthouse was the end game. Trials needs to be something other than just elimination with cool guns and armor. It needs to have aspirations within the aspirations, because trials was never the aspirational content. The aspirational content was getting to the lighthouse. 
we need to incentivize casual play and give people a reason to to do it. I'm just I desperately long to see the days when trials was back at its peak. People would brought, fill up LFGs, grab bounties every weekend, and just play it. The mode is nothing without cannon fodder. And if the sweats want to duke it out, they could duke it out in a separate playlist once they've already achieved the goal. If you want the farm, give them a farm. Because right now, it just it there's a brick wall in front of every game. And, you know, like... I forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, you know, we already have armor glows. The possibility for cosmetic rewards. Oh, you made it to the, you made it to the lighthouse that weekend. Cool. Here's a yellow armor glow. You've been carrying people. Here's a white. You've won a bunch of games in the lighthouse playlist. Here's red. Red, a nasty, mean glow to say you're the best of the best. You're a killer of killers. White for the good guy, yellow for the average Joe, red for the meanest, baddest dude. You can put cosmetic rewards behind carries, behind the lighthouse playlist, behind just getting there. Like we already have these systems in place. I just feel like they with a new lighthouse and a little bit of tweaking. We can get it there. And to close out the video, uh, I'm sure this has gone on for an excessive amount of time with me just ranting at my screen. My final thoughts are this. Bungie, please listen to your players. I think it was Cammy that said in one of his videos that if he or Grenade or Jake or anyone had been invited to Bungie to test trials before it launched, they would have said outright, this isn't it. They would have seen the writing, and even me, someone like me, average guy, probably could have seen the writing on the wall at the beginning. This game has that magic, and you have a dedicated community. It's just, I deeply fear that Bungie is going to go down the road that so many other developers have done who had that magic, thinking they can do no wrong. Our fans will love it no matter what we do. And so much of this fan base is driven by the idea of what Destiny could be. Driven off of the idea of this game's potential. And let's be honest here, that's all this video is. It's an essay of what Trials could be. It's a vision of what Trials might look like one day. It is as much fan fiction as it is feedback. And I know I said at the beginning of this video that... Uh, I wouldn't use a half-baked meme, but I can't think of a better analogy to close this video off. If you don't want something to be undercooked, let someone taste the food before you serve it. If you've made it this far in the video, I think I'm, oh God, I've gone over half an hour. If you made it this far, thank you. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe because like I said, I am not a content creator. This is very much a one-off thing. Uh, although I've been told by every YouTuber I've ever watched that uh, apparently engagement such as clicking the like button and commenting really pushes the video's visibility. So maybe if you agreed with what I said, if you think this, these are all great ideas, do that. Thank you very much for your time. And uh,